Friends, if uh, you'd like to take a seat, we would invite you to do so if you prefer to stand and then do this as well. I'm going to ask the commissioner and um, the doctor to come and stand with me. I think it makes great framing for uh, what we're going to do. This seems to be live. Okay. Let me please start by thanking the members of the press for being here. I think that of the many events that I've done, this one is probably as important as any. And it's very important because too often communities that are not within a certain circle, these communities don't always get the attention that they deserve. And we want people to know that Harris County and that the representation that this community has is efficacious. We want people to know that, that we are concerned about communities across the city, not just some communities, but all communities. And the way for people to be aware of this is for the press to be present to take the message to the masses. I'm so proud that the press is here today and I want to thank you for what you're doing to get this message to the masses. I also want to thank a good many people who've been a part of this process. Getting these community project funds into the community is not easy. Uh, it starts, of course, with Congress passing legislation to allow for the community project funding to take place, which requires an act of Congress. But before you can get an act of Congress, you have to have a Congress willing to act. And I'm proud that this Congress has demonstrated a willingness to allow funds, taxpayer dollars, to be channeled, as it were, back to communities where they can be placed in the hands of people, such as the Harris County Flood Control District, who will make a difference in the lives of these communities. This is called community project funding. That's the process. But this process is really important to communities like this one because we are able to direct these funds. But we don't do it because we have some sort of supreme, superb vision of what's happening across the length and breadth of the city. As a member of Congress, I need help. And I'm proud to have the help of Commissioner Rodney Ellis. He and I have worked together for many, many years, not just on projects since he's been a county commissioner. We go all the way back to when he worked for Congressman Mickey Leland, when he was a city council person, when he was a state senator. Uh, it's important to have reliable, dependable, well-informed elected officials to help you understand the needs of the district that we both represent. And I'm proud to have the good doctor standing next to me. Uh, doctor, I appreciate your being here, Dr. Peterson. Uh, and for your expertise that you have provided to make sure that we get this job done uh, in a most efficient and effective way. So now, one additional person, uh, this councilwoman for this area. Uh, she is not here today, but she does have representation. Uh, the representative, would you stand representative uh, so that people can see you? This is the representative from Councilwoman Castic Tatum's office. Uh, she prefers to be known as Dee Dee, as I understand it, Chavez. And she is a chief of staff for the Councilwoman. The Councilwoman is the Vice Mayor Pro Tem. And we are proud to be in District K, which is also within this portion of it, within Congressional District 9, and also within this portion of it, Commissioner Precinct 1. Now to move on to the project itself. Today, uh, we will pre be presenting a check. It's, sim it's a symbolic check. A check for $9.88 million. $9.88 million. <laughs> These are dollars that originated in this community and in other communities across this country. These dollars went to Washington, D.C., but I'm proud to tell you that these dollars are coming back to Houston, Texas,
to this district today so that we can improve living conditions for the people who happen to live in this district. This project will make alterations to the channel to allow a 500-year storm event to be contained within the channel. The channel is behind me. I beg the press, would, if you get an opportunity, go over and see this channel. When we say there will be channel improvements, that's another way of saying deepening and widening. We're going to improve it so that the water can flow. Eventually, all of this water in Houston, if our system functions as it should, flows to the ship channel and then from the ship channel into the Gulf. If it functions as it should, this is what should happen. Unfortunately, when we have these 500 year events, they overwhelm the existing system. The existing system did not contemplate 500 year events taking place within a 10 year period and having multiple of them occur within some 10 year period. We didn't contemplate this. So we have to prepare for the future now that we know that these things can happen. Hurricane Harvey was a wake up call for all of us. I don't know that we can prevent that type of inundation from having an adverse impact, but we're gonna do the best that we can to minimize the impact. We're gonna do the best that we can. And this community is a part of the community that was adversely impacted. And we wanna make sure that we do what we can to minimize the impact here. Specifically, this project will include channel improvements along Sims Bayou. It will expand retention and storage volume. It will replace bridge crossings. It will deepen and widen the ship channel, or this channel, excuse me, extending from Sam Houston Tollway to its connection with Sims Bayou. All of these are important things to have occur. I want you to know that the money that this project has received is about 0.00058% of the discretionary budget for 2023. 0.00058% of the discretionary budget for 2023. It does not break the bank. It is important that this money come to this community. But I assure you, my friends, that if we don't let Congress know that we want to continue these community project uh, funding as it is currently taking place, it can go away. I want you to know that I, I'm going to fight for you. But sometimes you have to fight for yourself. And it would be wise, it would be judicious, it would be prudent of you to let people know that you want to see community project funding continue. This money in total, all of it, will be less than 1% of the discretionary spending for a given fiscal year. Less than 1%. It's money that is well spent and it's money that's going to make a difference in the lives of people in this community. Having said this, I am proud now to ask my colleague of long standing, a friend of this community who has made a difference as a city council person, as a state senator, as a county commissioner, and just as a good, decent, just a good, decent person who cares about people, the Honorable Rodney Ellis, to give his comments. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you so much, Congressman Green. And as he said, I think you can hear me now. Is that better? Am I talking to it? Uh, we have known one another for a very long time, and I was just reflecting on some of the issues that uh, we worked together on, Congressman, when you were the Justice of the Peace uh, and also the head of the NAACP. And I want Dr. Peterson to know, in particular, one of those issues that comes to my mind was the uh, city's MWBE program. And I found an old article, some of the stuff that we kept uh, all those years when I was in the Senate, wish we'd framed it, it's kind of faded. I sent him a copy of it where Congressman, uh, uh, then Justice of Peace Al Green, was saying that the city's program was going to essentially, when you took all of the numbers out, you know how they try to trick us with all those numbers with a formula? It really amounted to a goal of about 
five, seven percent of the city's funding. And Tina, we were pushing back then. Is that is that better? <clears throat> to just make it, don't touch it, right? But talk into it. We were pushing to just make it a flat number of 20% as a goal, but not a quota. Does that sound uh, familiar? So beware. Uh, he will come back. He's tenacious. And in the middle of the night, that's where I got to have it from. In the middle of the night, he'll think of something. <laughs> and then uh, if he calls you, you can't call him back because that phone uh, won't take text messages. <laughs> you know, but he gets it. He knows when you call. Uh, but I want you to know we're going to follow through on our commitments uh, for our county MWBE program. And just thank you, Congressman Al Green, for your leadership on so many issues. Give him a warm round of applause. These projects do matter. Thank you. Uh, this is not just ceremonial because you're roughly 10 million, 9.8 or so. You're roughly $10 million is 20% of this project. And my sense is if we hadn't had that 20%, we probably would have picked some other project to do because we were trying to piece it together. We clearly have more projects than we have funding. And I want to give you and your colleagues in Congress who voted for it credit for more than just this $9.8 million because the state money that's in it is federal money as well. Dr. Peterson will walk through that uh, even more clearly than I, than I will. But we did pass a bond issue because of support from you uh, congressmen and people in communities like this one. So uh, a good bit of this funding is also from our Harvey Bond package. Uh, I want to thank you, Elder Green, uh, for being here with the hip shoes on. You know, I'm, I'm very impressed for you to be the founder of this church and show up and the people in the neighborhood. And of course, Cast Tech Tatum. Uh, this Sims uh, federal project was completed in 2015. And that significantly reduced the risk of flooding, but it didn't solve it all. Congressman Green went through the numbers, but here's the reality of it. What used to be a 500-year flood seems to be showing up uh, a lot more frequently than 500 years. And with the heat wave we had this summer and the freeze we had a couple years ago, who knows what's going to happen next? Climate change is a reality. So as we celebrate this project, Congressman, and thank you, I want to make the point uh, that this funding you put in made a big difference. We believe that all our families in Harris County deserve a safe, strong, resilient Harris County. On top of the county's $44.8 million overall commitment on this project, thanks to you bringing it about, is going to significantly reduce flooding in this community. We have projections on how much, but I want to stress, we really don't know. Because whatever is happening out there with climate change would make it completely different. In this era of climate change, Projects and partnerships like these are essential to our region's future and help us improve uh, flood and resilience issues overall. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that climate change affects our ability to protect communities from flooding all over the region. Please know that we're working locally to combat climate change following the leadership on the federal level of Congressman Green, his colleagues, and the Biden administration. Uh, we're going to make some significant changes in our county. In January, the county approved its first ever climate action plan to reduce carbon emissions from Harris County operations by 40% by, by 2030. That means the buildings we control, the things we do, we're going to reduce our carbon emissions by 40%. And that's important and a difficult thing to do. To do. Now we're working to develop a community-focused uh, climate action plan to protect and empower communities that are most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Uh, and this is one of those communities. We'll be the first county in the entire state of Texas to do this, and it's part of a broader commitment to equity and resilience. I want to applaud Congressman Green's efforts uh, and his advocacy for making this funding available today. And I want to encourage him to continue, as he has always done, to find more, more, more projects. <clears throat> you will hear us doing press announcements in the, in the near future. Last point I want to make is that I, too, know this community very well because I grew up in what was called Sunnyside. And, Tina, I always joke about Tim Sims Bayou was not called Sims Bayou in Sunnyside. In this area, it was called Chocolate Bayou. And the... Uh, the drive-in theater, you too young to know what those are like. Well, when the drive-in theater in, in the neighborhood that I went to was called the Chocolate Bayou Drive-In. And then you had the McClendon 
uh, triple complex, which was obviously in the in the area where you could go if you happen to not quite look like the congressman and me. But I, I say that facetiously to make the point. There's a reason why neighborhoods like this one were neglected and looked over. That's why the county put together equity guidelines on how we spend this money. And that's why it's so important to have a congressman who watches us to make sure we are following our equity guidelines and get to neighborhoods that have, have been neglected for far too long. So thank you, Congressman Green. I'm going to try something. Uh, we've been having some mic problems. Let's see if this works. Is that better for everyone? Okay, thank you. Uh, given that we have better reception, I think I'll just repeat something before I bring the doctor up so that we can give it to you with a greater degree of clarity. Uh, we are today presenting a symbolic check for $9.88 million. Uh, this money is going to be used to deepen and widen the channel, which is right behind me. It's going to expand retention storage. It's going to replace bridges and crossings. It is going to give this community an opportunity to avoid the inundation that it might ordinarily experience, but for this, this project coming to fruition. So I'm very proud of what we're able to do here today. And I'm also very proud to present our next speaker, the director who has had a hands-on experience with this project. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us. Uh, Dr. Christina, and I believe the last name is Peterson. Correct. All right, please give her a hand, please. Thank you, okay. Good morning. Hopefully we can have our audio problems resolved. So I would just like to thank you, Congressman, um, for having us here today and for your support as we celebrate this important project. Thank you. And Commissioner Ellis, I would also like to thank you for all of your support. You're really leading the way as we tackle these issues in Harris County. As you know, this is a project that we have been working on for many, many years. It is an important project. Here in the Sims Bayou watershed, we had more than 6,500 structures flooded during Hurricane Harvey. And we've seen repeated flooding in this community since then. So the project that we are talking about today will provide over a thousand acre feet of stormwater detention that will reduce the risk of flooding for over two miles of our channel that we're looking at back here. And it's gonna help more than 150 homes. It will also not just help our structures and our homes, but it's also going to reduce the risk of flooding on our roadways. We'll have more than four miles of roadway that will be protected so that our residents and our business owners and our first responders can, can travel and get to where they need to be in these storm events. So these improvements are critical and crucial, and we are just so thankful for the partnerships that we have. This project in particular is a wonderful example of partnership. Congressman Green, you are a partner in this. The almost $10 million that you are providing has been foundational in helping this project go forward. We also have a partnership with our general land office and the HUD, uh, the, housing, uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. They are also going to be, we hope, providing funding to potentially fund this project once we apply for it. And then, as you mentioned, Commissioner Ellis, we also have money from the bond program. So all of these different funding sources, we also have our state partners at the Texas Water Development Board who have also funded this project. So it's really an amazing partnership. We have our local leaders, we have our state leadership, and we have our federal partners who are all contributing to make this project move forward at a pace faster than it would have been able to otherwise. So again, I say thank you to you, Congressman, and your Commissioner Ellis for, for your support as we move forward on this project. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Let's thank give you. her a big hand, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will now uh, get to the most important part of the program, I suppose. That is the presentation of the $9.886 million instrument. And I'm going to move all of these things so that they don't blow around while we're doing this. There we go. Okay. And to do this, we'll move forward to the front of the podium. And we're going to ask the representative, Didi, would you come up, please? And we're going to ask the pastor to come up, please. Pastor, if you'll come and stand over on this side. Uh, you're representing this community. 
The pastor's name is Green. He is Elder Billy R. Green. Uh, I just have to believe that somewhere there's a connection, Pastor. Oh, we'll try. <laughs> uh, okay, so friends, at this time, it's my honor as your member of Congress to present this check for $9.88 million. As the commissioner has said, we can round up today for $10 million. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm going to assume that everybody has a lot to give out. If you haven't had one, raise your hand. All right, let's get that one. You have one, right. you have one looking good? That's the question. How are we looking? What about over here? You got yours? Are we looking good? Don't have us cross-eyed looking every direction. All right. You start rounding the money down. Thank you, everybody. Well, I'm going to leave this with you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to have you sign it. I'm going to All right. put it on the wall. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll take one or two questions. If, uh, if we have questions, let's have one or two questions. Any questions from any member of the press? Members of the press, any questions? We usually do such an outstanding job that we have few questions. Have we done well today? <laughs> Apparently so. All right. Give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this concludes the press event. And again, I want to thank the members of this community for being here, the elder for being here, Elder Green. Uh, especially want to thank the commissioner and the doctor for their participation. But I do want to again thank the press because without you, people will not know that communities in this neighborhood are getting the help that they need. So thank you, members of the press. Give the press one final hand. Thank you. All right, that concludes our press event. Notice how we get shorter when it's this hot oh, and humid. Yes. <laughs>